Hello and welcome to another edition of Devlin's Pirate Radio Show. I am Devlin and I hope you're doing wonderful today. I thank you for sitting down and taking the time to listen to another one of my episodes. I talk about a little bit of everything today. And uh, I'm going to start off with uh, something that's going to really be really warm my heart a little bit. And that's always a good way to start a show. Uh, there are two movies that were p coming out this fall that I was really looking forward to. And both kind of cater to my childhood. But I still have fondness, obsession about both of them. Of course, one being Star Wars The Force Awakens that will be coming out later on in 2015. And I'm sure I will be talking Star Wars in the weeks ahead to prepare for it. The other one is a little movie called The Peanuts Movie. And I am a huge Peanuts fan. And I don't know if a lot of you know that. Um, if you come to my house, you'll see uh, the odd things Snoopy or Charlie Brown related. Uh, I have been a big fan since I was a little kid. I think I revealed on an episode uh, a couple of weeks back that I actually dreamed of being a cartoonist. Now, when I dreamed, back in the day when I dreamed about being a cartoonist, it was more of a comic strip illustrator more than like animated features. And one of my inspirations was Charles Schulz, who created the Peanuts Gang. I... You know, absolutely enjoyed the comic strip. Uh, I know sometimes the comic strip was a little dry, and it wasn't like as bitingly funny as some of the other ones. But I always felt he always seemed to be using it for social commentary as well as, you know, just simple laughs. He never went for the big outrageous laughs. And, of course, then he translated all that into the specials, starting with the Charlie Brown Christmas special, which is still iconic today. Many of you probably watch it every year and are going to be watching it again very shortly with Christmas just around the corner. And then, of course, all the other ones. Not all the specials are considered great, and some of them are bad. But you know what? I still enjoy watching those, too. Peanuts has been around for a very long time, and uh, the Peanuts movie has been in the works for a while now, and everybody's been wondering, is Charlie Brown still pertinent? Is, is you know, do kids really care about them? Well, obviously, if you look around, their merchandising is still everywhere. Even little kids know who Snoopy and Woodstock are, and... Um, so yes, they are still pertinent. But a lot of people also feared that when the movie came out, they'd try to modernize it. Charlie Brown lives in a very simplistic world, but also can have biting, biting social issues. Charlie Brown himself, of course, is uh, you know practically bullied by the other kids. He's called a born loser. In the Halloween episode, adults are throwing rocks in his bag. Like, adults bully him. Like, he doesn't have a great life, but we know he's a good man. And not just because the song tells us, you're a good man, Charlie Brown. Um, this is actually the first, not the first time the Peanuts movie have been in theaters. I, I, a lot of places are toting this as the first Peanuts movie. This is the first Peanuts movie that will be in 3D or just filmed in a different style. But I believe, and I could be wrong, I, I very seldom admit that I'm always right, but I do believe that Race for Your Life, Charlie Brown, did debut in theaters. Now, he did have a couple other movies, A Boy Named Charlie Brown, Snoopy Come Home, but there was one called Race for Your Life, Charlie Brown, where he was at a summer camp, and I seem to recall seeing that in the theaters. Um... I, as I said, I, I idolized Charles Schulz. I loved his simplistic comic strips. I'd always read Peanuts with all the other comic strips. My first dog that I got to name was named Snoopy. Um, 
that's just how much I loved it. When I was a little kid, my mother made this kind of like a potato stew. It had like potatoes and it had gravy and I never really wanted to eat it. And basically she would like, you know, take the fork and take the potatoes out of it. Uh, not take them out, but she'd crush the potatoes out so it would be almost like a mush in the thing. And my mother actually called it Charlie Brown Soup. And uh, I'd actually eat it just because she called it Charlie Brown Soup. Not realizing it was the potato gravy thing that I snubbed my nose up to just a couple minutes before. I wasn't a smart kid. What are you trying to say? Anyhow, I love to draw, and I really wanted to create characters like that. I eventually lost that. Um, I probably, I think I mentioned it in the past episode, a teacher that just ruined art for me, made me walk away from all that stuff. But Peanuts always stayed on, even though, as I said, there's a lot of specials, a lot of the comic strips... I didn't like, and but I still loved them. I love the characters. They're all like great personas and stuff. So I really was anxiously awaiting to see what they would do with the Peanuts movie. Well, I finally got to see it, and I'm happy to announce, for me at least, I'm not speaking for anyone else, but it is getting good reviews. I think they did a wonderful job with it. They didn't try to modernize it that much so there's no Charlie Brown doing rap or hip-hop or them playing songs. Now a lot of people were worried about that because in the trailer they did use more modern stuff. They do use a couple of new songs but uh, they're by Megan Trainer, and they are really just sweet pop songs. There's they're no real like hard lyrics or anything like that. You know so they keep it all simple. But what I love about this is they didn't try to modernize it in any way. Some people might actually not like that. But there are no cell phones. There's still rotary phones. There's typewriters. There's things. And the kids that were in my theater were getting a laugh and enjoying it still just as much as the older people who had big smiles on their faces. I know I had a huge smile. I know Mike next to me and... I was with my friends Corda and Dave, and I heard laughter from everything. I love that everything touched people differently. Um, everybody just seemed to have be endeared by something, and all your favorite characters are there. The voice work is impeccable. Like, obviously, the people who have been doing voices for them, a lot of them, some have passed. But they found... Because sometimes you'll watch a new show, and even some of their specials. The, something's not right with the voices, but they really nail the voices here. And uh, and for that, I'm so thankful. But the look of it, it looks wonderful. Um, uh, I didn't see it in the 3D. I, I just, uh, I'm not a big 3D fan and will only go to certain films. I didn't feel I needed to. It would have been interesting to see. There were some scenes in it that I have to say to the director were absolutely phenomenal. Ways that they would go from scene to scene. Now this was kind of a series of vignettes. And it tells a story. They've done specials that are just vignettes. And I find sometimes there's no story. But everything in this led to a story. Now, they didn't even try to do anything really far-fetched, and I like that, because they told stories we've heard time and time again, but they seem to make them fresh. And I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, the naysayers are saying, the peanuts aren't even, you know, pertinent to the young crowd. Well, after this, I wouldn't be surprised if they are more ingratiated. Now... They don't have fart jokes or bathroom humor like other kids' movies seem to tend to fall back on a lot. Uh, it may not have had like the deep psychological atmospheres, the Pixar movies, who basically, in my eyes, are almost getting a little too adult. Um, they do a little bit of that and, and, and character evaluation, but, but not to the part that Pixar does. But you know what? It's a feel-good film. It feels fresh, and I'm glad to see that it's going to open 
really big. And they think that because the reviews are so high, this opened the same weekend as Bond. And it literally had more uh, of positive reviews. Uh, Bond's been getting uh, kind of mixed reviews for the new movie Spectre. But the Peanuts movies have been ranking high, and not only by critics, but from people coming out of the theater. Um, they're b both in the 80s, and that's a good sign that the Peanuts are going to play for a while. And you know what? Could play right into Christmas if they play their cards right. And I'm happy to see that, because I still get endeared. Just, you know, I am a big pop culture fan, and... Peanuts and Star Wars, just seeing certain merchandise for them just makes my heart melt. Now, the thing I like about the Peanuts is I think Peanuts pretty much stays classy. Star Wars is just kind of, you know, they have a lot of merchandise that I love, but they have so much I hate, like Star Wars Angry Birds or Star Wars Lego, you know, like, don't get me wrong, I like Star Wars Lego, but I hate when they do the movies and just recreate the same movie with Lego. And I, that just drives me crazy. But, you know, Peanuts, you know, still deal with, like, Hallmark and stuff, and they come out with, like, the musical little features, and nothing ever seems, you know, like, I don't think I've seen a Charlie Brown toilet brush or anything like that, but I'm sure Disney's going to have a Star Wars one at some point. Because they just will sell the likeness. You know, here's little kid versions of the Star Wars people. Now, don't get me wrong. I am still looking forward to the new Star Wars movies. But as I said, I think Peanuts and Star Wars, for me, I'm endeared by their merchandise in a lot of ways. When I see something that's really sweet, I'm like, oh, that's so nostalgic. And they, it warms my heart. Mike and I will crank out the specials for all the holidays. Especially the really good ones. Some of them, like Easter, have their questionable moments, but they're still entertaining. And the Christmas one is still sets a standard for a lot of things. It was one of the first Christmas specials based on, you know, characters we know and love. And it was the first time, you know, we saw these characters come to life. And uh, I honestly think... If they never went into that and got into the merchandising, we might not know. Peanuts would just be like some old comic strip that our parents talk about. But there's a reason why these characters are so endearing to us. And, uh, yeah, and I'm so happy that I like the Peanuts movie. I hope you go check it out. Um, don't let critics uh, put it down. But as I said, the majority of the critics are loving it. Uh, it is so refreshing to see a movie that doesn't pander to, like, lower levels of humor. It always stays true to itself. Some people might be missing a little bit of that social commentary that they like to put in the early comic strips or in some of the specials, because there's none of that in here. It plays for a young audience, but there's enough nostalgia. And uh, all your favorites are here. There's a couple missing, but all... all all the ones you'd expect are there, and they are using all the gags that we know, almost a checklist of everything we need, but still, it comes off feeling fresh and exciting, and it's. I'd like to see more kids' entertainment like this that entertains the kids and the family, but doesn't have to go always into nudge, nudge, wink, wink, did the parents get that one? Because it was way too hard for the kids to get. You know, and don't get me wrong, I watch all Disney films and I see where they did that a little bit, but it's it's refreshing to see a movie like this that does not promote violence, does not promote, you know, bathroom humor, you know, you won't have your kids begging you for a fart gun this Christmas. So let's hope that uh, this not only leads off to another generation of beloved Peanuts fans, but let's hope this also shows that we can make stuff that doesn't have to be dumbed down, but can still be fresh and original, even though we've seen it for, you know, 40, 50 years, I don't 
can't remember how long the peanuts have been around. Trust me, they've been around longer than me. Anyhow, it was nice talking about the peanuts. Go right directly after this and go and see it. And if you're listening to this later on in life, go rent it because it'll put a smile on your face. Anyhow, that's enough Peanuts talk. It's We're going to be uh, talking something a little bit more serious in the next segment because that's what I do. Something light, something serious, something funny, something thing. We're all over the place today. And I think that's what you guys like about it. Anyhow, we're going to take a short break and we'll be back right after this. We're back, and uh, I always say we're back. I don't know why. It's just me sometimes. Sometimes I have a co-host. That makes sense when I say we're back then, but it's weird when I actually say we're back, and it's just me in the studio. Actually, because, you know, Corda does a lot of the producing. She does all the producing. I just kind of have ideas, and she does them, but she does all the the hard work, so I always consider her part of the show so i think that's why i always say we're back the next topic i want to talk about is not an easy one to talk about yeah we're coming up to one of those ones um but i don't necessarily talk about these just to like get sympathy or get people to feel bad for me i i do them because I know there's other people out there that probably deal with this. And I like to tell my sides of things, because if it makes them help, if it helps them, if it makes them think about what they're going through, I think if I can touch one person's life or make one person think about it, then I have succeeded in doing something on this planet Earth. I'm going to call this segment uh, Food is Love because I grew up always being a chubby kid, hefty. Uh, we also called it husky back in the day. Nothing more horrible than having to go buy your pants in the husky boy section. Yeah, we're going back to the 70s now. They don't use that term anymore. But um, I've always kind of fell back on food and the reason why is because my family was close but we weren't like we didn't hug we didn't say we love each other you know that all came later on in life and you know I remember kissing my family uh you know we'd kiss on the lips and stuff and I don't know if that was just a European thing but that's kind of what we did but we always knew we were loved but one of the ways we knew we were loved was through food and my, I remember my mother used to always give me food as a reward or as a making me feel better. Food used to be pretty much everything. If I had a bad day at school, you know, well, why don't you have some cookies? Or if I just felt a little blue. Why don't you have cookies? If I did great on a test, well, why don't you have some cookies? Like, I'm certainly not blaming my family for having great food around the house. I was privileged to be in a family that always had, like, the cupboards and the fridge stocked. Uh, but, you know, food became love to me, and I understand the concept of comfort food. You know, when people say comfort food, I'm sure immediately in your head you thought of many different things. You know, whether it's macaroni and cheese, whether it was, you know, it could be anything, really. Everybody has their own style of comfort foods. Grilled cheese sandwich, you know. And probably just saying the word comfort food just triggered your favorite one in your head. But I eat. I'm a stress eater. I'm a love eater. I, you know, if I'm in a good mood, I eat. And, you know, I've always been chubby. My weight fluctuates. But I kind of have one weight and I fluctuate maybe about 30 to 40 pounds, whether I'm, you know, in a, going through a good period or a bad period. I've always said I never really want to get extremely thin, though I don't know if I could even lose that much weight. 
I just don't know how good I'd look. That's a little vain to say, I don't want to lose weight. Because I, I hate to say it, but some people lose weight. They don't look good. Um, because you're so used to them. And you're great. It's, it's a, it's a bittersweet fit blessing because some people are great when they lose weight and it looks, you know, very natural. And it's like, I think this is what you're supposed to be. But some people, you know, you, you know them as big. You know, you think they're attractive when they're big. And then when they lose the weight, you know, it's like, who is this person? It doesn't look good on them at all. Um, and I'm not saying that's a bad thing, because as I said, it's bittersweet, because you're healthier, you know, you just don't particularly look as good, you know, you, but feeling good, that's the important thing. So anyhow, food for me has always been, you know, I used it for everything. And as I got older, it used to be, as I said, my comfort food, or when I'd have stress, I'd have a horrible day, I'd go and want to eat chips or, you know, have some, you know, uh, cookies. And I fall right back in that routine. And I know there's a lot of stress people out there, you know. Uh, there was a time that I know that it was just also food was fun. Um, I remember every day, practically, after work, my friends and I would go and get some chips and we'd get a, you know, big you know, extra large Slurpee, uh, you know, I'd get a Coke Slurpee and I'd be, you know, drinking that while eating my chips while watching TV. And, uh, you know, that just became a routine and it made me happy. And whenever I'd think of chips and, you know, Slurpees, I'd, it put me in a happy place. And I know a lot of you probably are comfort eaters too, stress eaters. Some of you might be eating right now as we... I haven't eaten through the thing podcast, so I know I'm not totally gone yet. I'm not uh, sitting here worried about it and munching on chips or anything. But I think that would just be rude of me if I was eating chips. The reason I'm bringing this topic up is... Um, is food has always just been there for me. Food is love. That's what I was trained. That's what I was trained as a thing. I get it for rewards. I get it for bad days. I get it for everything. That being said, um, a couple of years ago, and this is something I don't like to talk about. I don't think I've mentioned it in any of the episodes prior, but I was diagnosed with type 2 diabetes. And uh, I remember the day I got told I was just floored and I knew... This would change my life. I actually went to a clinic to find out how to deal with it. Uh, I cut down my pop consumption. Uh, I couldn't give it up totally just because it's like one of my big addictions. But I wound up cutting out quite good. And I started like looking into healthier snacks, eating, cutting down portions and a couple of months after I was diagnosed with it, I actually was getting good blood numbers and I was getting, I was starting to lose a little weight. As I said, I usually fluctuate, so people might not know that I was losing weight, though I did get a couple of compliments, but I knew because I've got ankles that tell me when I'm getting too big. Um, I don't know what it is. My ankles just get really sore when I walk, and then they eventually go away after I walk a little bit. But they always tell me, hey, you're putting it on the pounds. So anyhow, I was doing really good, and um, I continued that for a while. Uh, you all know by now, uh, if you're regular listeners, that this has been a nightmare year for me. I've been dealing with a whole bunch of anxiety. I lost a job I loved at Target. Um, I, you know, lost some friends that I saw every day because of Target. Uh, I, and when I say lost them, some of them are still in my life. Luckily, I have a couple that I have very close. Uh, a lot of the people that I just, I hear from once in a blue moon. Everything I predicted is slowly coming true. I'm totally going through, like, left-behind disorder. All stuff you can hear on earlier episodes. But one thing I haven't mentioned is that during this time, 
I have turned to comfort foods again. I totally gave up my cutting down back on pop and started drinking it quite regularly again. Uh, even though it makes me happy, but then there hits a point where I, it makes me very sad because I know I shouldn't. Uh, my portions started going up, snacking returned to a big way, and I'm starting to gain weight. I'm starting to see it. My ankles aren't just telling me. There's other parts of my body that are telling me that I'm getting too big. Not that I'm getting... Some of you who see me might not even notice that much of a difference because I I carry my fat, you know, mostly in my belly, but I carry it very well. <laughs> As in, you know, I can tell I'm getting bigger, but other people might just say, is he bigger or is he... It's hard to tell, especially if you don't see me on a regular basis. But the food's been there for me again. It's been there for love and all the anxiety, all the stress I've dealt with, and as much as I hate to admit it, sometimes a bag of chips, you know, is comforting to me. I always feel bad at the end when I have like a stomach ache or something, or I need to reach for the Tums or the Eno, but I know I've been putting on the weight. Um... I go for checkups every couple of months because of the, you know, the diabetes and they watch my, my, um, blood pressure, you know, my cholesterol. Uh, and, uh, everything is good. Um, like, but I'm starting to go back into the danger zone again. And what I mean by danger zone is is when I started losing the weight, I actually dropped some of the metformin pills that you take for type 2 diabetes. As in, if you lose weight, you don't have to take the pills. If you lose a lot of weight, that is. If you start losing weight... So I went from, you know, taking, you know, um, four a day to two a day again. But... After my last checkup, I'm actually, they've increased my dosage again. And I'm back up to where I first started. And I realized that I didn't know this was going on. But, you know, I've talked about that I've had feelings of suicide a lot this year. And I've been thinking about the fact that I haven't even noticed half the stuff I've been eating and stuff, and I even know that I'm eating when I'm not hungry. Like, like I literally have a full belly, and I'll talk myself into needing, oh, I need some more popcorn, or I want another glass of pop. And I've come to terms with the fact that, although I've been dealing with, you know, suicidal thoughts, and I've put them out of my head, and I've been fighting them, that... My body has basically been killing me, too. That the food consumption that I'm taking is basically me killing myself slowly. The fact that I'm gaining the weight again and that I have to take, you know, more metformin to deal with the diabetes and now I have more anxieties because of the fact that I'm trying to deal with cutting down again and cutting all my consumptions, you know, you know. But it's hard because right now it's the thing I turn to. Again, I'm not saying this because I want you all to feel sorry for me. I'm saying this because I know there are other people that probably do this too. You know, you keep eating and you're technically killing yourself. You're, it's a form of suicide. It's kind of an easy suicide because it's, you know, when I'd have thoughts of th suicides, you think of a knife or a gun or, you know, jumping off a building or something. But here I am just eating and eating and eating and drinking pop and drinking more pop and drinking more pop. And basically it's just me killing myself slowly. 
And for the people who are thinking that too, we, we, we all, all need to stop doing this. And I, I'm including myself because I know I have to get back on track. I have to start losing weight because I don't want to get bigger. I, you know, I'm already noticing that, you know, I need bigger shirts and, and it, it's, it, it is an issue and I'm, I'm working on it because now it's come to light again and I've actually opened my eyes to the fact that I've been secretly committing suicide over the last few months and uh, I'm doing my best uh, I'm not gonna lie to any of you I it's gonna take some time uh, obviously you know I will work on it just when I was thinking of all the other suicidal tendencies I didn't realize my body was secretly trying to kill myself because I'd be craving you know all these snacks and stuff now, if you are out with me somewhere, like if we're hanging out, going to a movie or just going out for a, you know, a coffee or something, please do not stop me from anything. Shaming me will not help. Like if we're out at a movie and I get a pop, you making a comment is not going to help. I will just feel bad about myself and I will tell you I will go home and I will drink more. I don't know if it's to spite people or I don't care anymore, but shaming me will not help. So if you see me somewhere and I'm eating something that you know I shouldn't be, going is not going to help me. Because I will tell you, my head will put me doing it worse. I'll just think, who cares anymore? Who cares? Everybody thinks of me as a fatty. Who cares? I am working on this. That's all I can say. And I... If you're going through similar things, I hope I've helped you at least open your eyes to it. We need to stop this, because it is basically suicide. It's a beautiful, sweet suicide, because it's good foods. I cannot change my lifestyle completely, but I can cut down stuff that I need to, and eliminate some stuff that I really have to as well. The fact that now that I've figured out, I think it was a real eye-opener when I found out that, you know, I had to increase my metformin for the diabetes, because whenever I hear that, oh my god, you know, I've got to fight with more medicine, I think to myself, I don't, I don't want to die this way, you know, I don't want to lose my feet or lose a leg or go blind just a few of the symptoms from diabetes. I'm going to work on it. I plan to. That's the game plan. I'm starting to try to watch the portions I eat. I'm trying not to get bloated. I'm trying to cut down on my pop consumption. Yes, I wish I could magically just stop. But I can't. I don't have a lot of other vices in the world. I don't smoke. I don't drink. I don't I don't do, you know, I I don't smoke pot. I don't do anything. And I'm running out of my positive vices, too. Like, I know I need to get out and find something to do. I haven't been to improv in a long time. I've taught a couple classes here and there, and I look forward to doing more of that, because I know that's a positive thing when I'm out. But, um... I don't know, maybe it's time for something new. Maybe I need to find other ways to socialize with people. Maybe I just... I remember when I found improv, I was at a crossroads. And I think here I am again at a crossroads. Um, maybe I need something new. Anyhow, uh, again, I didn't talk about this just for you to all say, Oh God, you know, I'm so sad for him. I also did this because I really hope that if you're dealing with this too, you know you're not alone. Um, there's other people going through, but really, it doesn't... You can have everybody tell you, you got to lose weight, you got to live better, you got this and that and this. And some people can do that, but other people, literally, you have to start with yourself. 
I'm not ready to die yet. You know, I may have moments where I think it's... I want to, but I know I look around and I see all the blessings in my life, and there are lots of blessings. And I know that when I wake up the next morning, I'm, I don't want to die. So anyhow, I'm going to do my best to work on that. And um, right now I'm craving a cookie real bad, but I'm going to enjoy this glass of water I have and fight the urge. And I will be back with another segment in just a little bit. Welcome back. This episode is really going to show the range of my emotions today. started off with happiness and joy. Then I moved into, you know, sadness, reality. And now I'm moving into a little bit of anger because I want to talk about something that is really pissing me off right now. It's actually a mem on Facebook. I love Facebook. I'm a supporter of it. I love it. There are sometimes I have to literally walk away from it. Sometimes there's just stuff going on it that just makes me real sad, angry. Sometimes I need an air sickness bag just because of some of the stuff. But most of the time, I think it's wonderful, I feel good about it, and I, I love it. But then every once in a while, I see a mem that drives me crazy. Actually, there's a lot of them that drive me crazy. But then there's ones that make me want to spend a 20-minute segment on it. And I found one that certainly does, because it just burns my ass. Uh, the mem that's going around is basically people saying, This holiday season... Why don't we give our money to real people? Give it to little independent shops. Give it to people who have private owned places. So we're giving our money to real people and not to big corporations. You know, which are, you know, sending stuff into Swiss bank accounts. The mem goes on and on. There's various versions of them. Now, first of all, I'm not upset by the concept of this. Not at all. Um, I can think of a lot of independent or privately owned stores that I totally respect and support. I shop there regularly, and if I don't shop there, and I know my friends own it, I try to promote them from time to time and get other people interested in the product. Uh, Wicked Wax Creations, Burlap and Twine, Bella Biscotti, these are all, you know, small companies out there, and I love going to shops on Locke or Ottawa or just on James or all over the place. You can find these shops. Of course, I'm from Hamilton, so I'm going to pick Hamilton shops, but it doesn't matter what town you go to, you can find these shops. And I'm all for, that's not the part that upsets me, I'm all for supporting these small companies. The thing that I am getting pissed off at is they're literally using the term real people. And this is what I don't like because of the fact that, as I said, I'm all for supporting small shops. I think it's great at Christmas when you can find a specialty gift. You know, I'd, I'd certainly rather to give that than something, you know, that, you know, I could buy, you know, hundreds of in a thing. I, I think it'd be great. The real people part of it bothers me because, yes, if you choose not to shop at Walmart or some of these other places, and I'll admit I'm in a corporate place. Value Village may look like a thrift shop, but they're all over North America. But the truth of the matter is, is yes, they are corporations, and giving their money to them is your choice. If you can find everything you can in small independent stores, go for it. I'm all for it. The problem I have is that maybe you don't think of corporations as real people, but what they have is that they hire real people to work there. Okay? I work there. People you know work there. Family members you know work there. So when we give our money to those big stores, yes, a lot of that money is probably going to big corporate people who have overblown salaries. Some are probably putting it in private bank accounts, whatever. But a lot of that money goes to other people that work there. And guess what? 
they're real people too. So when we support these big corporations, yes, you can picture a guy sitting in a desk with a big cigar coming up with ways to screw you over. But you should also think of the fact that they also employ tons of people. And I bet you can look on your Facebook and see a ton of people that work in retail. So as much as I'm for supporting small independent places, I say spend your money wherever you want. But you, we need to spend money in those corporations because you see, as much as I love privately owned businesses, they don't hire as many people as the big corporations do. And I know some of you are thinking, but if we spend all our money in the private, then they can hire more people. But the problem with this is, is yes, they can hire maybe a couple more people to help them. They might even get to a point where they might need to, like, start a small factory and hire a little bit more. But they will never get to the point of hiring that many people. And I can guarantee you, if they do get to a point of hiring that many people, then... What's to say they won't become corrupt and they might start hiding money and treating their employees badly? But the truth of the matter is, is you need these real people that work at, you know, the Walmarts and the Giant Tigers and the Value Villages or wherever. Because when they get money, then I get to choose where I spend that money. Now, whether I spend it right back in the store, that's fine. But I can tell you, when I get a paycheck, I like to share the wealth. I put it to some corporations. Other times, I like to go to these little stores and be able to pamper myself and get some candles or some biscotti or some, you know, uh, of my bath bombs that I speak so regularly of. They don't come cheap. And by all means, they shouldn't. Because these people work hard on these products and they have to charge a little more because they're putting their energy and their love into it. The problem with the mem is the way they phrase the real people. Because it insults me to think that real people are only the ones that venture and work in these small things. Because sometimes us real people have to get jobs in corporations. Sure, I would love to work in a small little shop. I would absolutely love it. I can't afford to open my own, and none of the people I know that run shops are looking for people. Sure, I'd love it too, but there's just no hiring opportunities. So if I have to go to a corporation, I have no choice. That doesn't make me any less real. Okay, so you stop going to corporations. That's fine. If you do that, that's great. That actually will show them that you don't want them anymore. If they start closing down, then the problem is, is those real people get laid off. They look for other work. Some of them will find it. Others won't. Now we don't have the money to go spend it at those fine little private shops. So, as you can see, it's a vicious circle. And then that, those shops will be affected. And the only people, ironically, that can shop at those shops are the higher-ups, the people who, you know, who can go out and treat themselves. Because I'm telling you, I've always had minimum wage jobs are just slightly better. Now, I, I've done good with my money that I can go and support corporations, but I can always save a little money to support small independent shops. And I like it. As I said, I totally enjoy this. But I just cannot stand the fact that they use the term real people. But if my hours are cut, or if I'm fired, the first thing that I have to cut is my luxury items. I can't do my bath bombs. I can't spend more money at these places because I'm not getting any money. So I'm all for, you know, if there was a mem going around like, let's try to use you know, private companies or privately owned stores more often this Christmas. I would post that right up on my page. I would totally support of that. But the fact that this mem constantly says real people, the real people are the ones that we're giving the artists, the shopkeeps and stuff. But the fact that real people are also working in the corporations and you start cutting that, I say it can be a nice mix. Because I'm telling you, there's a lot of people that you know that would love to get a specialty gift. You know, something handmade or something, you know, that's 
exclusive to that store. But I know a lot of other people that wouldn't want that. They want just something you buy at a corporation. And some people don't, you know, want anything. So, as I said, it's not the supporting of it. I'm all for it. You know, if I have friends that have a small business or something, I'm one of the first people to to put it on their Facebook and support it and let people know it's out there. If it's a shop that I like stuff in, I'll go and buy. I wish I could go more regularly, you know, but unfortunately it's pricey and I can't. But when I get the chance, I always try to do that. So, yeah, so it's the real people thing. I get really upset when people call me a non-real person because I work for a corporation. Now, some people probably think I'm being oversensitive about this, but sometimes you got to look at these memes and see how they're really phrased because it does bother me. It does. And as I said, Facebook, for the most part, I absolutely adore. But... Um, Every once in a while, something will cross my uh, path that just drives me absolutely bonkers. You know, other memes that drive me crazy is when I see... I absolutely love watching the videos of rescued animals. I think they're phenomenal when you see, like, their progress, and then they're sent back out to the wild, or there's a happy ending. But what I hate is when people adopt animals now into their lives and they say we rescued this animal uh, and you know a mem like rescue an animal today rescue an animal today and I think to myself that is how egotistical or or self-pleasing have we become that we have to use this term I, um, you know, we used to always go to the SBCA to buy our pets, and we adopted them. I love the term, we adopt them, because pets are family members. I have an adoptive brother, and so I think the word adoption is a beautiful, beautiful word. And I love that, you know, when people, you know you know, mention, you know, how the dogs and cats and birds and whatever else you have are, are real members of the family. So I think the word adoption is a beautiful, beautiful word. But somewhere in the last couple of years, we have turned to using the word rescue, as in, I have rescued this dog. Now, if you're a fireman or a woman that ran into a burning building or you literally risked your life to get this animal, then you have every right to use the word rescue. But the fact that you're using this term to say, I rescued this dog because it was going to be put down, you know, the goodness of my heart, I rescued it, I think is so egotistical. I think the word, you adopted it. We are bringing him or her into our family. This is family. If you adopt a child, you don't say, I rescued this child. I rescued this child. Not even if you were, like, adopting a kid from a third world country who was, you know, dealing with famine or thing like that. And you, you, I would never hear you say, I rescued this child. You would say, I adopted this child. This child is mine. My God, imagine if we start getting to the point where we say, I rescued this child it would be so pompous so why would we do it with pets since we're in a, a world now that we're basically pets are on a high order just like humans which that's a whole different other segment uh, i love pets i don't have one right now but i always grew up with pets dogs uh cats i even had a cat but, uh, yeah, I, I hate these memes that are like, I rescued a dog. I rescued this cat. Now, if you found this cat, you nursed it back to health, by all means, you have every reason to use that statement. But when you're using rescued because you went and you bought a dog, um, no, you adopt that dog. Adopt is not, it's a beautiful word. It's not a dirty word. It's a beautiful word. 
When I hear people say, I adopted this cat, I think, wow, it's part of the family. You know, I don't think, you know, but when you tell me I rescued this cat, then I want to hear the story. If you bottle fed it, you know, after thing, yes, then you've got every right. But if you just went and, you know, sent an email out, could I have one of your kittens and then paid your money and then got the kittens, you adopted it. You did not rescue it. So it's just a term. Like, we've just become so screwed up as people that we need to, like, feel so good about ourselves. So I rescued this dog, you know, and I, come on, come on, stop it. We need to stop that. I didn't expect to talk about that now, but I realized my real people one wasn't going to take me to the end of the show. There's a lot of little things that I read in memes that drive me crazy, but as I said, for the most part, Facebook makes me smile, helps me through hard times. Then there are days I need to walk away. Um, and those are two reasons why um, that drive me crazy. I can think of other reasons, but probably not good to share here or just can't think of them right now. So uh, I'll try to leave on a high note so you don't think I'm just going around angry and I'm going to go sit and stuff my face. That might happen anyhow, but don't judge me. But, uh, you know, there's lots of good stuff on Facebook that makes me smile. Some things I don't understand at all, but I love when people share memories, photos. I like when they just share parts of their life. You know, I never understand why people put Facebook down, because for me, I've I've been reunited with people that I probably never would have seen again. And I may not hear from them a lot, but it's nice when you get a little note from them or you see that they liked something. I prefer if they'd call me up and say, hey, you want to go and have a coffee or you want to sit and talk? I would love that. I'd like to give them a big hug. I'd love to sit and talk with them for a little while. But uh, sometimes you don't get that with some people. And, well... You guys are at least lucky. You can listen to this show, and it's like me being there, rambling on for an hour like I'd do pretty much if we went out for coffee. Except I would, like, let you jump in every once in a while. But only every once in a while. Anyhow, um, that's the end of this episode. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know what you think. Uh, send me some emails, you know befriend me on facebook if you haven't already uh let me know what you think the good the bad the ugly you will hurt my feelings a bit but i'm big boy i can take it but i'd love to hear from you and thank you to all the people who take their time to listen to it whether you listen to maybe a segment here and there or whether you're a regular i do know i have a couple of regulars and i appreciate each and every one of you because time is precious i've said it before and the fact that you give me any of that is a wonderful thing. On that note, I am going to leave you. And I'm going to go try to do something physical. Because I've been sitting here for an hour rambling on. And I'm going to try to go for a walk or maybe dance. Or maybe even just do some weights. And try to avoid... Having a big snack to revo reward myself for job well done. Here, I'll pat myself on the back for you. There you go. That's better than a cookie. Anyhow, I'll probably have a cookie later. Who's fooling anyone? But later, later. Anyhow, on that note, have a great night, and we'll talk to you real soon.